This is a short video that describes the application form that is required for any micro-credential or badge proposal. The application form document begins with some information about badges and micro-credentials. Be sure to read through this information so that you understand the difference between a badge and a micro-credential as well as the different types of badges and micro-credentials that we offer throughout the Toro University system. Finally, it's useful to determine whether or not what you are proposing needs to be approved by the micro-credential unit or the continuing education unit or if it is an example of gamification. It is also useful to review this graphic outlining the application process. Once you've completed the application form, you will work with the coordinator of micro-credentials to ensure that you've met all of the required criteria. Once the coordinator signs off on your application, it gets submitted both to the Toro University System Academic Affairs Committee as well as the Executive Vice President. These two bodies review the proposal independent of each other and either body may ask the individual to make changes to or to add specific items to their proposal before it gets approved. Depending upon how significant these revisions are, individuals may be required to get updated signatures and individuals may be required to work with the coordinator of micro-credentials to address these particular revisions. Looking at the actual application, the main proposal form is divided into three parts. The first part every individual must complete. Part 1 begins with a question asking what type of badge or micro-credential is being proposed and then asks the individual to list the names of each of the badges and or micro-credentials that are being proposed. Question 3 asks for the lead faculty member or staff member that is going to be responsible for these badges as well as the unit that is going to be responsible for offering these badges. Question 5 asks you to list any additional faculty or staff that will be involved with the offering of these badges or micro-credentials. Question 6 asks two questions. The first question is focused upon those who are proposing faculty and staff development badges, experiential badges, skills badges, or non-credential badges. And in those cases, it is asking the individual how many hours of instruction is represented by each badge that is being proposed. The second question is only for those who are proposing for credit or credit bearing badges. In that case, they are asking how many units or credits are associated with the badge and if the badge is aligned to a specific course it asks that you include the course syllabi as a part of your application. Question 7 asks about the modality in which the badge will be delivered. Is it fully online? Is it face-to-face? -face? Is it hybrid? If it's online or hybrid is that synchronous or asynchronous? Question 8 asks for a brief description of the badge and or micro-credential using language that you might find in a course description or in a description that we would place on a website. Question 9 asks if there are any other badges or micro-credentials in the Toro system that we're already offering that's similar to what it is that you're proposing. And if there are, what's the rationale for your unit offering a separate badge or micro-credential on that topic? Question 10 asks what are the learning outcomes or the goals for your badge? These are the types of things that you would put in a syllabus for the learning objectives that you might have for a course. Now, in the case of a skills badge, make sure you include the specific open skills code from the open skills database. And there is a separate video on how to determine the open skills code that you can review.
Next, question 11 asks how the students are going to be assessed or what evidence they will have to provide to determine that they should be awarded the badge or micro-credential. In completing this question, think about how you would describe the evaluation or the assessment portion of a credit course that you may be offering in your degree program so that the level of detail would be similar to what one might find in a syllabus under the evaluation and assessment category. Question 12 asks what resources are needed to offer the badge or micro-credential beyond the actual badging program that we use to issue the badges. Examples of items that might be included here could be Canvas, could be other technology that we use in the system, could be physical resources that your unit would need to acquire in order to offer this particular badge. Question 13 asks, who is the badge intended for? Is it for our existing students? And if so, are you referring to undergraduate students, graduate students, or both? Is it intended strictly for faculty and staff? Or is it intended for an audience outside of the Toro community? For question 14, if you are proposing any badge that isn't a faculty or staff development badge, you want to provide a marketplace analysis as to why you believe this badge is something that the market needs and that Toro should invest resources in creating and marketing. Your response to this particular question should be two to four paragraphs in length. Question 15 asks, is the audience for your badge or micro-credential people who are already part of the Toro system? For example, people who would already have a Toro 1 ID. If the answer to question 15 is yes, you do not have to answer question 16. However, if the answer to question 15 is no, question 16 asks, what are the criteria that you will use for admitting learners to this particular badge or micro-credential? The last question in part one, asks you to provide evidence that you have consulted with or partnered with at least one individual outside of the Toro University community. Ideally, this would be somebody that is in the field that you are hoping to target for this badge or micro-credential learning opportunity. The last requirement for part one is to add your signature to the proposal as well as the signature of the leadership of your unit. This would include people like a program director or department chair, as well as the dean of your college. Part two of the application is only to be completed by those who are proposing experiential skills or non-credit badges and micro-credentials. If you are proposing a credit micro-credential or badge, skip this and go on to part three. Part two begins with a question asking when is the first time the learning that is associated with the badge or micro-credential will be offered. As experiential skills and non-credit badges and micro-credentials can be offered at any time and aren't tied to a specific term or semester, you want to be very specific with your response to question 18. Similarly, the first part of question 19 asks the length of time required for the particular badge or micro-credential or the length of time that is provided. If the experience is happening in a synchronous or real-time fashion, you would want to indicate the length of time. For example, it might take three hours to complete. However, if the experience is asynchronous and particularly if the learning is self-paced. You want to indicate how much time is provided. For example, learners have 90 days to complete the learning associated with the badge after they have registered. The second part of question 19 asks you how frequently the badge will be offered. In this case, you can respond using semesters or you can respond indicating how many months in between each offering. 
Question 20 asks if there is a fee associated with the Badger Micro Credential and what that fee may be if there is one. Finally, question 21 asks for the specific codes needed to ensure that the appropriate unit receives the funds generated from the fee associated with the badge. Part 3 of the proposal form should only be completed by those that are proposing credit badges or credit micro-credentials. Question 18 asks for the formal name of the micro-credential program that we want to attach to the specific concentration code in Banner. If you are not proposing a micro-credential, if you are only proposing a badge, you can leave question 18 blank. Question 19 asks what specific courses are going to be associated with the badges and or the micro-credential that is being proposed. If these courses do not currently exist in Banner, on a separate sheet there is a series of information that needs to be included to allow the registrar to be able to create each of these courses. Question 20 asks, what is the first semester that you are hoping to enroll learners into this particular badge or micro-credential? Note that the first semester should take place at least one full semester from when you are making this proposal. So if you are making this proposal during the fall semester, it may take the full spring semester to build all of this information into Banner, which would mean that the summer semester would be the first semester that you could offer this badge or micro-credential. Similarly, if you are making the proposal during the spring semester, it may take the full summer semester in order to put together all of the information in Banner, which would mean that it would be the fall semester that would be the first one you could offer this badge or micro-credential. So as you are planning out your first offering, make sure that you are submitting your micro-credential or badge proposal at least two semesters before the first time you hope to offer the first course associated with that learning experience. Question 21 asks for the specific part of term or pot that the courses will be associated with. Typically this is a two or three digit code that is provided by the registrar. The first part of question 22 asks the total length of time required to complete the badges and or micro-credentials. What this means is that if there are three badges in your micro-credential, how often will these be offered to allow the students to be able to complete a particular program? Question 23 asks what is the per unit tuition and any additional fees that should be associated with each of these badges and or the overall micro-credential. In the case of credit badges and micro-credentials, there is a requirement for a series of signatures. The coordinator of micro-credentials will ensure that these signatures are obtained. So you should wait until that coordinator has signed off on your proposal before they begin to circulate the proposal to the specific individuals listed here. You will note that there are additional portions of the proposal form that can be completed after the proposal has been approved. There are additional videos for each of these forms that you can review at the appropriate time. This has been a very